Hi, I'm not going for a full pass paper today, but want to show you how to approach some of the higher mark questions and really think about planning them out before you start answering them. Uh, it's up to you if you're going to actually adopt this approach in an exam, but it's, it's useful to do this as practice anyway, just to make sure that you're thinking about how many marks are available, how much time you got for the question, uh, and then you can just feel a bit more comfortable and more in control when you come to do these questions. So the ones that I'm looking at today are actually coming from an old paper. This is a 2018 paper, uh, but the questions we're using are still completely relevant for the papers that you might get today. So let's have a look at the first question. We're actually, well, I said the first question. We're going to start with question two. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before I even start reading the question is I'm going to look at this number down here. Because this tells me how many marks are available for this question. Okay, so six marks. That's giving me an idea that I'm going to have about six things to do. Usually you're going to have one step in each question for every mark you've got. Uh, and if you want to think about how much time you've got to answer it, well... You've probably got about one and a half to two minutes for each mark. So if we've got a six mark question, we're probably about talking about uh, 10 minutes to answer the question. Okay, so we know we're going to have about six steps for this. So let's have a read. So we've got Mo manages track repairs. He needs to order 60 tons of stones for a track repair. The stones are sold in full cuboid containers. A full container of stones is 80 centimetres by 80 centimetres by 70 centimetres. Mo knows that one metre cubed of the stones weighs 1.8 tonnes. Each container of stones costs £45 and 16p. Mo wants to order the smallest number of containers of stones as possible. Work out the total cost of the containers of stones Mo needs to order. And use the box below to show clearly how you get your answer. Okay, so let's think about what they're actually asking us to do. And it's to work out the total cost of the stone to needs to order. Okay, so let's sort of think backwards. If we want to work out the total cost, well, first of all, we're going to need to know how many containers we need. So the number of containers. Okay, and if we think sort of further back, well... We're giving information about the size of the containers, so maybe we could work out the volume. But uh, we know we know the total weight that we need, so we're going to need to use some sort of information to help us get from a volume to weight, so then we can work out how many containers we're going to need. Okay, what adds to it? as well is that we can work out the volume so uh, actually let's draw it's always good to draw a little sketch as well so this is going to be our cuboid okay so we've got 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters by 70 centimeters now it doesn't have to be to scale I mean you're going to say that can't be 70 centimeters as it's longer than that it doesn't matter it's just a sketch, okay? But if we're looking at this, we're thinking, right, well, I've got lots of centimetres here, but when we've got information here, they're giving it in metres. So we're going to need to do some converting from centimetres to metres as well. So let's start to, to plan this out, and I'm going to see if we can squeeze it down here. Right, so we know we're going to need to work out volume but before we do that, we've just said we need to get everything into metres. So the first step we're going to do is going to be to convert from centimetres to metres. Okay. Once we've got that, then we can work out the volume. And that's going to be in metres cubed. Okay. Once we've got the volume, well, what can we do with that? Well, 
If we've got the volume, we can use this conversion to turn it into weight. So we can, well actually work out volume of one container. Then we can work out the weight of one container. And if we know the weight of one container, well we know the total weight we need so we can use that to work out how many containers we need. So work out how many containers. And then if we know how many, well then we can multiply that by the cost to work out the total cost. Okay. Now we've got five steps so far, although we've got a six mark question, so there's probably going to be an extra step in there somewhere, but we won't always know that until we start to do the question. So there's likely to be some rounding uh, or estimating or something we might have to do along the way. So let's work through these steps. Okay, convert from centimetres to metres. So for each of these, I want to turn them into meters. Well, this is a calculator paper, so if I want to turn that into meters, I know there's 100 centimeters in a meter, so I'm going to divide that by 100. And that's going to give me, well, let's use the calculator. So we've got 80 centimeters divided by 100, and we're going to get 0.8. 0 0.8 meters and well this is also 80 centimeters so that's also going to be 0 0.8 meters and 70 centimeters is going to be similar if we're dividing that by 100 we're going to get 0 0.7 meters okay we can use the calculator to check that so we've done step one we can tick that Right, then work out the volume in meters cubed of one container. Right, so the volume, let's do this here, volume is the length times the width times the height. Well, in this question, the length is 0 0.8. The width, well, it doesn't matter which order we do it. Let's say the width is 70 or 0 0.7 and the height that's up here that's another 0 0.8 so if we do 0 0.8 times 0 0.7 then times another 0 0.8 we get 0 0.448 meters cubed so we've worked out the volume of one container. Tick. Now we want to work out the weight of one container. Well, if we know one meter cubed of the stones weighs 1.8 tons, well, if we've got 0 0.448 meters cubed, well, we can just multiply this by the 1.8. So we multiply this by 1.8. And I've still got that in my calculator from before. And I get 0 0.8064. And that is in tons. So I've worked out the weight of one container. I can take that one off. Right, work out how many containers. Well, we need 60 tons of stones in total. Each one of them is 0 0.8064. So we want to know how many of these fit into 60 tons. Or in other words, we want 60 divided by 0 0.8064. So I've already got this on my calculator, so I'm going to put that in my memory. So we've got 60 
divided by memory recall and we get 74.4047 so let's write this as 74.4 we just round it to one decimal place and that's containers well we've almost done step four work out how many containers 74.4 well you can't just go and buy 74.4 containers we would need to buy 75 containers because 74 won't be enough so we've got to go up to the next whole number so we can put so need 75 containers well, let's unline the 75 there right so we have worked out how many containers we need we can tick that one right now I'm just going to scroll this up a little bit so for the final step so really I said that there'd be an extra step to the question and actually it was this going from 74.4 to 75 so this is where we'd get our extra mark. Okay. Now the final part of the question, work out the total cost. Well, we need 75 containers. Each one costs 45 pounds and 16 pence. So if we multiply those two together, we can clear this now. 75 times, what's it, 45 16 and we get 3,387 okay so that's probably taken us about 10 minutes to do which is about the time you'd have uh, but hopefully by breaking it down like this so you wouldn't necessarily want to write out all of these steps but it's just getting you to see right this is everything I'm having to do I can see where my marks are coming from, so six marks. We've got five steps, but as we said, we've got almost like an extra step in part four here, because we had to do a little bit of uh, rounding up to the next whole number. So planning out our questions, getting to the end, and feeling, yep, yeah, I've done enough steps, that feels like I've done the right amount of work. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, this is question three of that same paper. There's a high-speed rail track between London and Manchester. The length of this track is 210 miles. A train departs London at 11.20 and arrives in Manchester at 13.28. The train company claims the average speed of this train is 104 miles per hour. Is the average speed of this train 104 miles per hour? Uh, well, I should have looked at the start to say, well, this is a four mark question. Okay, so again, we're thinking I've probably got about six minutes to answer it, something like that. And I'm going to have about four steps that I need to do. Right, so we've got speed, we've got time. So this is telling me we've got a sort of distance speed time type question. Now, you might find it useful to draw this triangle, which is showing us the relationship between distance, speed and time. If you're not used to this triangle, don't worry, but this is really helpful because it tells us if we want to work out distance, we need speed times time. If we want to work out speed, it's distance divided by time. And if we want to work out time, we want distance divided by speed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to work out, well, they want us to work out the speed. To work out the speed, we need distance divided by time. Well, we've got the distance. We haven't got the time. So we need to... Work out time. And if we do that, we're going to be looking at the difference between these two times. So the time that we work out is going to be in hours 
a minute. But if we're going to use this formula, so if we're going to say for the speed we want distance divided by time, we can't use the time in hours and minutes. We're going to need to convert that time into decimals. So step two is going to be convert time to hours in decimal. Once we've got this, the time, then we can put it in the formula and work out the speed. And the final step will be compare the speed we've worked out with 104 miles per hour. Okay, so we've got four clear steps. This is where we're going to be getting our marks from. Right, so let's start with the first bit. Work out the time. So we want the time difference between 11.20 and 13.28. Well, from 11.20 to 13, that's going to be two hours. So that would two hours would take me up to 13.20. And then from 13.20 to 13.28, we're going to need an extra eight minutes. So we've worked out part one. Now we need to convert this time into hours. Right, well, we know we've got two hours. Now the minutes, well, it's eight minutes, and we know there's 60 minutes in an hour. So we need to do eight divided by 60, this will give us how much of an hour it is as a decimal, and then we add on the two so we get the total time. So if we do this, we get 8 divided by 60 is 0 0.13333, so 0 0.1333 of an hour. That's how much 8 minutes is. Then we add on the two, so we get 2.13, I'll put a dot for recurring, and that's hours. And I'm going to put this in the memory on my calculator. So we've converted the time to hours. That's two marks in the bag. Now we need to work out the speed. So speed is distance divided by time. We know the distance is 210, and the time is 2.13, and that's 33333 three, 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 recurring. So we want 210 divided by, and now I bring my answer back. Now I'm not rounding this because we're going to lose some accuracy, but I don't need to round it because I can use my memory. So if divided by 2.13333, and we get 98. Point four miles per hour. So we've worked out the speed. Final part, compare the worked out speed with 104 miles per hour. Well, 98.4 miles per hour is less than 104 miles per hour. So is the average speed of this train 104 miles per hour? No, it's not. So we've done the comparison, four steps, four marks. And I'm just going to look at one more question from this paper. We've got question nine here. This is a four mark question. Okay, so let's have a read of this one. Zara needs to buy t-shirts to sell to people at the run. She finds this offer for t-shirts. So we've got £4.79p per t-shirt. Add a logo is £2.90 per t-shirt. Buy more than 100 t-shirts each with a logo and get 15% off the total price. We're told Zara wants to buy 130 t-shirts. Each t-shirt will have a logo on it. 
How much will Zara pay in total for 130 t-shirts, each with a logo? So loads of information there, lots of words. But we're going to focus on this four marks. So that's four things we've got to do. So let's list them out up here. Right, well, we know the price per t-shirt. We also need to add a logo. So let's work out. Cost of one t shirt including the logo. Okay, that's going to be the first step. When we've got that, we can work out the price of a hundred and thirty t shirts. Oh, work, work cost, work out cost. So work out cost of 130 t-shirts, including logo. Right. Once we've done that, well, 130 is more than 100, so we're going to get this discount. So we've then got to take off 15%. And then the final part of the question, and again, we're doing a little bit of guessing exactly what's going to be required in each step, but you can get a good feel for it and it's going to help us to manage our our time and the amount of work we need to do. So this is in money, so chances are we're going to have to uh, tidy or round the final answer because it's money, we're going to round it to two decimal places. Okay, so right. Number one, work out the cost of one T-shirt, including the logo. So now I'm not really having to do too much thinking because I've put down what I have to do. I'm just following my instructions. So one T-shirt is £4.79 and the logo is £2.90. So I'm going to add that together. I can use my calculator or I can do it here. Right, so we've worked out the cost of one t-shirt, including the logo. Tick. Now we want to know what this is for 130 t-shirts. So times that by 130. Now I am going to cheat and use my calculator. But it is a calculator paper, so that's fine. So £7.69, multiply that by 130. And we get 999.7. Well, this is money, so we put it as £999.70p. So that's the total cost of 130 t-shirts with the logo. Can tick that off. Now we need to take off 15% because we've got a 15% discount. So you could work out 15% and take it off, but we're on level two here. So I'm going to say, well, if we want 15% off, that means we're going to be left with 85%. Yeah, so 100 minus 15 leaves 85%. I know that 85% as a decimal is 0 0.85. So we can multiply these two together. So times 0.85 is 849.745. So that's taken the 15% off. If you want to work out the 15% and then subtract it, absolutely fine. Okay, but we've taken our 15% off. Tick, that's three marks. Now we just need to tidy this. So we're going to need to give ourselves a pound sign. And of course, we can't have money with three decimal places. So we're going to have to round this up to two decimal places. So seven, four. So we look at the five and say it's five or more, so we need to increase one to the four. 
So we're going to have 849.75p. And that's going to be our final answer. So we've got four marks, four steps, and nice and in control because we planned the question before we started it. Okay, so a slightly different video today, but I hope you found this useful, really trying to kind of break down the question and think about it before we just go straight in and start answering, because then you'll just feel uh, a lot more in control, and hopefully that will help particularly with these higher mark questions. Right, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified as I add more videos. Like, add comments, ask any questions, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.